Inventor OEM is a developer toolkit to create niche, standalone software based on Autodesk Inventor technology. When installing the OEM toolkit, you get the white-labeled version of Inventor OEM and a configurator to customize the Inventor OEM application. Running the Inventor OEM version as it comes out of the box looks like this. You get the full-featured Inventor OEM application with the components, parts, assemblies, drawings, and presentations. And you can create content using the native features of Inventor OEM. You get all the menus, sketching, annotation, inspect, tools, manage, view, environments and the getting started guide. You can do all inventor modeling that you can do with the inventor product. Here's a sample of free form modeling, direct editing, something like that. To be able to do customizations to Inventor OEM, there is a requirement to have Inventor Professional installed side by side with the Inventor OEM product. That is because the Inventor SDK will be used to create the customizations for Inventor OEM. So any add-in that you write, or any code for an add-in you write for Inventor product will also work with the Inventor OEM toolkit. There's a sample application that comes with the uh, Inventor OEM Toolkit. Here's the Configurator tool and also the tutorial explaining the Inventor OEM concept and the step-by-step -step guide to create your custom application with custom features and functions as well as how to implement the licensing, how to place your add-in, and also how to change the look and feel by changing buttons, icons, and splash screens. Let's have a look at that. Using the configurator, in the first tab, I create a project I can configure the types of documents that I will support with the My OEM application, standard inventor parts, assemblies, presentation drawings, and DWG drawings. I've renamed my product name. I can also rename the custom ex uh, host executable, main executable. If I want to rename some of the document types, I can do that. I can also use custom templates for each document type that I choose to use. I can also disable document types from here, meaning that they won't be available for the end user in my final application. So following the tutorial sample, I have now created my iBlock project, and I have named my product iBlock the host executable will be iBlock Enixi. I'm keeping the document types that are default in the product. In the product images tab, I can change the splash screen, product names, and the icons associated with my product. This is what it will look like with my tutorial images for splash screens, icons, and there is an icon over there which says powered by Autodesk Inventor. That comes automatically and that is the only reference that I will have to Inventor or Autodesk in my product. Before we move on, let's have a look at uh, some code. So I have created a sample project 
the tutorial project that comes with the product. It's called iBlock, and it's a, it's a Lego assembly um, application. Uh, it has commands for placing different sizes and colors of Lego blocks. And there is standard inventor API functionality, and there is an activate function that checks the valid license for my product. And if the license is not valid, it will shut down gracefully. So building this application and going to the add-ins tab the add-ins tab lets you define the primary add-in and any other add-ins that you want to run in your application. You need to have at least one primary add-in because that is the one that uh, checks the licensing, uh, validates the license of your program. So, uh, but you can have any number of add-ins additional. And they need to be in a certain location. So this is the add-ins location and I have my iBlock OEM demo app add-in in there. And this is the location for uh, the DLL needs to be in the bin directory or a subdirectory for the bin directory. So I have my iBlock DLL and we'll try to add it here. Once I have specified my custom add-ins, I can also select some of the built-in add-ins like BIM Exchange or iLogic module. I can choose to support some common CAD formats with my application. In the other tab, I can specify keyboard shortcuts for it for certain commands in my application. What I basically do is I use the inventor product to record the keyboard shortcuts and then I import them here to include with my product. In the install images, I change the appearance of the installer because the configurator lets you create a ready to distribute deployment of your product. I will do that right now. So this is what it looks like now. I can also provide my own documentation with the product, installation help system requirements, and readme file. Uh, in the install settings tab, product name is already, uh, already set in the first names tab, but I can I can give it a company name. This means that the product will be installed in the default location, program files, blocks are us, iBlock version 2. I also get an upgrade code for future versions. I can give a product description. If I need to provide a license agreement file, then I can choose what units and standards I will support. And if I have any other language than English uh, installed, I can choose among those. This is what it looks like when I have entered the location on my deployment and product. In the last tab, files and build, the folders displayed in the tree represent the user's machine where you'll be installing your application. So the yellow folders are where files can be added and additional directories created. I'm going to add some components here. Box are us, I block files. Okay. 
So when I add that directory, you can see that my Lego block parts have been added. So I think it's time to try our application so I can run it from the configurator by pressing run here. And there is a license check. And there's a very nice hint there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our iBlock application. So let's start with a new design. And let's place a block like that. And another block like that. I like that. Okay. You get the idea. And uh, it seems to work. But what's interesting here is that I can also build my installer from the configurator. Let's do that. Okay, the build finished in less than two minutes. And you can see the result. It looks like it was successful. So let's go to the location of my installer. And, and there it is. Uh, we got a fully branded installer ready to ship. And by that, this demo is Finished, and thank you everybody for listening.